welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Let's do the time warp again. Yeah, I forgot how that sound goes. So, anywho, in... I apologize for my singing. It's okay, as long as it's not that song that you did before that's never coming out. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, in today's episode... Uh, we are going to review the IDW issue 64 of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. In this issue, Fluttershy and Rarity travels to Manhattan where Rarity discovers the old ugly fashion are back in style. And it seems that it always is. Like, we, anything that was back is coming back now. Hmm. This tells you something about that. So, anywho, let's hit into first impressions. Silver. Well, this is a fun sort of one-off. It's not hugely deep, but it is a lot of fun, thanks mostly to the visuals provided by Andy Price. There is a little bit of development for Fluttershy, which I enjoy, and, of course, rarity dealing with the cyclical nature of fashion. I say this often, that culture is cyclical, especially in entertainment. I mean, here we are talking about My Little Pony, which is the show I only kind of watched back when I was a kid. When Transformers, or Mask, or Silverhawks, or G.I. Joe, or Thundercats weren't on. Oh yeah, true that, I remember that too. And yeah. Or Wheeled Warriors, or Tiger Sharks. We, I, never, I don't remember Wheeled Warriors and Tiger Sharks, man. You weren't part of the 80s then, were you? You forget, I'm in Malaysia, we don't have the luxury. <laughs> I'm lucky that I don't know the first half of what you mentioned before. Ah, come on, I'm cultural exceptionalist here. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> no. Uh, but anywho, um, is that all Silver? Well, I'm sure I could list more 80s cartoons if you give me a little more time, but sure. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> all right. That's what I mean. Um, I, I like this comic, Andy Price. This. Here's the thing. By default, for me, Andy Price always gets an up. Yeah, he always gets an up from me because his art is always awesome. So, yeah, art from Andy Price is automatically up. Story, on the other hand, is very, very interesting because... Rarity is one part of the story, and Fluttershy is another part of the story. Somehow, this two, I won't say bad, but I won't say good. It's kind of a so-so, where one story is affecting the other, but it doesn't really have that huge impact. Yeah, it's it's just for fun. It's a short little fun story. True that, true that, true that. So, anywho, uh, before we head into the reviews, if you have not watched this, pause here and go read the comic. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the comic and the art style is really awesome. I just have to say, Andy Price's art here on cover A is just amazing. <laughs> like, the fashion. Like, yes, yeah, Spike is really rocking that uh, outfit, man. <laughs> yeah, and... Rarity, the prince outfit, yeah, she's rocking it. So Rainbow Dash in a workout outfit like that, I just, uh, what, I just love what she's done with her mane. I really like her mane! Yeah, does it remind you of Zarya? Oh yeah, the, uh, the, the workout outfit that, yes, in Siberia, we, workout breaks you. <laughs> uh, what is Applejack referring to? I, I don't remember. What is that? I don't re- recognize it myself. It's probably a movie. Probably, and also for the shine. So you know what, the the cover is great, but let's head into the comic proper. Actually, I'm just doing a quick Derpy Boru search. Usually, someone on Derpy Boru creates visual references. All right, okay. While you do that, I'm just going to go through the comics. So we join our hero Fluttershy and Rarity in the train of friendship going to Manhattan. So the reason why they're going to Manhattan is because, well. For Rarity, she's just going to try and find inspiration for her fashion. And Fluttershy has a uh, animal shelter symposium that she's attending. As they go on, um, Rarity says that um, fashion is kind of a phenomena where... Well, not really. She just goes there to find inspiration for her fashion. You know, like going to... A, a, a fashion refresh. So they arrive in Manhattan proper. With a great opening splash. Oh, yeah. And 
she discovers that oh no everything all is new again no <laughs> no but that means everything is awesome oh no oh no by the way i found i found a reference for all the the uh, costumes on cover a oh nice Applejack is John Travolta from Urban Cowboy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Twilight's Barbara Holland from Stranger Things. All right, all right. Fluttershy is dressed up as Tina Turner. <laughs> right. What's love got to do with it? <laughs> Pinkie Pie is Cindy Lauper. And Rainbow Dash is Olivia Newton-John from Physical. Oh, wow, nice. And Rarity is Prince, right? And Spike, Michael Jackson. So, yes, we have cracked that case. Well done. To the stat, to all the visitors on Derby Boru who make easy to reference information if you know the search terms. Yeah, and at the same time too, you have to wonder like most of the names that you mentioned before, Silver, they're really old names. Like, yeah, they're like from what our parents' time when they're relevant. Well, I'm really old too. So what's your point? I'm just saying Bang. that people who uh, did the research either are born in the year that this was relevant or they have a lot of what you might call this uh, what's the word I'm looking for for uh, media I'm forgetting well just they know a lot of stuff but anywho uh, where was I yes everything all is new again and yes Rarity and Fluttershy goes back to do the hotel and Fluttershy says oh uh I need to go to the convention hall now. I, I don't want to be late. And yeah, Rarity is kind of angry at the bellhop. Oh, not really bellhop. The receptionist. She's wearing shoulder pads. <gasps> oh, no. Do ponies even have shoulders? Good question. I don't know. But anywho, um, Fluttershy arrives at the convention hall and she is attending a seminar called... So, you decided to run the shelter, eh? And, yay! This is kind of fun. Uh, the speaker speaks about how um, to start one. And you, you have to do the paperwork and whatnot and all this stuff. And Fluttershy says, Oh, no, I, I need to register? Uh, Mir Mir knew I was doing this and stuff. And the pony sitting next beside her says, You didn't fill out your registration form, rookie. This sounds like a video game. Ah, noob. <laughs> oh, man, that hurts. So, yeah, all, all of this um, things that are going on, it's making such a shy question her sanity and her self-worth because she just did the shelter just because she wants to take care of animals. So anyway, after the presentation, she goes to the buffet table and meets up with another pony. And said pony is kind of feeling down and he did this a year ago and he says that if I would have known all of this before I started I might not have even started the sh a shelter so yeah I mean that sounds bad like that is bad well, but you know what's not bad what he's dressed as Marty McFly really this is Marty it's Marty the blue is pulling it's Marty. Uh, the, the blue is yeah. yeah putting me off Oh, but it's a, but what? He runs an animal shelter. He's a very kind-hearted unicorn. He's dressed as Mike Fly, and he's talking to Fluttershy. Oh, I ship it. <laughs> you ship everything. Yes. What's your point? <laughs> I say no to this ship. I want Discord and Fluttershy. Oh, I see. You're one of those hardliners. Yeah. So anywho, uh, we go back to Rarity, and Rarity reminisce about her youth when she started fashion. Uh, it all started when she was inspired by the fashion of the 80s where everything was there and so on. And she did her first uh, bedazzle jacket and whatnot and so on. And yeah, she she's kind of like pointing her nose up and says that like everything now is like, ugh, this is so last century. Like I've done this before. This is so boring and stuff. And she goes to a back alley. Uh, what? Well, yeah, it's kind of like, are you going into Crime Alley? What? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, well, anywho, um, <clears throat> it seems that the alley goes to Coco's shop, uh, named Lenoville, 
the, you know, oh, how do you even say that one? Anyway, uh, it's Coco Pomel's shop and yay, she enters and they reminisce about the olden age of fashion where they did this before and stuff and how fabrics before were terrible and now it was better and non breathable and stuff. And Fluttershy pops in and says she's true with it. Like she does not want to do a shelter anymore. And she's just all stressed out. I need to interrupt you, Norman, because there's two things. Oh, oh. One, they're calling her they're calling her Miss Pomel. Oh, which yeah. again shows the uh Chateau oh, what was it? Chanel. Yeah, Coco Chanel mm-hmm. uh filed suit. Really? So stop using our name. So now they can only use Miss Pomel. Coco's off the table. Really? So in my heart she'll always Oh yes. Chanel number no. five, their their premier perfume, I believe. Yeah, I know, but Coco is like not really like but Coco, man, like it's not a what? <laughs> How? Well, it it the it was started by French Couture Gabriel Coco Chanel. So they said, Hey, you can't use Coco, that's our trademark. But Coco is a name, right? Yeah, I don't know how Disney got away with it. But yeah, apparently, I think it's the combination of Coco and Pimel. It was too close, and so Chanel, her legacy, uh, basically called Foul. That's why she's Miss Pimel from here on out. But she'll always be Coco to me. Yeah, same here. I mean, like, if Conan can get away with it, why couldn't he? Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Librarian. No, um, the talk show host, you know, Team Coco. I just like if he was actually uh, a barbarian hosting. <laughs> Welcome to my talk show where I cleave my guest in two. <laughs> oh, boys, we need to do that one someday. So, anywho. I will hear the lamentation of their women. <laughs> so, anywho. Also, yeah, go ahead. It's it's also adorable when they're they're sharing tea. Coco's just lapping it up like a horse fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, while Rarity's drinking it like a proper... Uh, unicorn, yay. Well, she's got magic to lift the cup. I guess it different manners for different ponies. True. So, anywho, I was saying before, so the shy comes in, she says she's true with the animal shelter, she wants to cancel it, and she just... Rarity r- 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 just says, uh, what's wrong? And so the shy explains the whole thing where it's just so complicated. Like, here's are the things that I need to do. Like, I need to read up on this. This is just so frustrating. And so the shy says... If I knew then what I know now, I would have done things so differently. And this inspires Rarity to start things right. Like, she's a fashionista with experience now, so everything's going to be changed. Everything will be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Everything's cool when you're part of a dream. But it is true. To, to revisit something and to, to tackle it again, a lot of artists uh, will post something they drew several years prior and redo it to show how far they've come. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. So, anywho, um, we get a montage of Rarity and Coco here making dresses for Fluttershy, the model. Yay. A very unwilling model. <laughs> yes. Well, some of the designs here are, oh, goodness me, goodness my. I, I can't believe they did this one before. So, with parachute pants, like, what? <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think we have MC Hammer to thank for that. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh. And also, what um, that that rock punk rock or rocker metal <laughs> hair metal, uh, felt shy, and that really really skimpy tight outfit workout clothes. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Go up to the Marty McFly pony wearing that. I guarantee you, you get a ship going. You no. Know. Uh, so yeah, this or Discord if you feel. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, with that, Rarity uh, got her inspiration and she's just loving it. And Fluttershy is, well, doubting herself and whatnot. But Rarity says, come on, darling, you, uh, you've done an amazing job by doing things yourself. And look at the things you've done. Uh, you built that shelter on your own, maybe not the way that the, you know, not the way that they would do, blah, blah, blah. And uh, let's see. Uh, work, sorry, uh, but you saw a need and started from scratch, and you're amazing. Like, yeah, what, what, 
Rarity says is true because without guidance, without anything, uh, she created the shelter on her own and it worked out. Like, even with her friends trying to help, they, like, she says no. Like, she kicked them all out and did things on her own with help from, ah, what was his name again? Big Daddy McCoy. Yeah. So, uh, here, here's a quick reference to one page here. I, I, I do like the dog on the roof of his doghouse, yay. <laughs> and the raven uh, named Edgar. Oh, yeah, never mind. Mm-hmm. And also Angel Bunny with a cameo sign. <laughs> oh, boys. So, anywho. Sunshine and Rarity goes back to their hotel and starts the day anew. So... Rarity, sorry, uh, Fluttershy is the convention, and uh, Fluttershy just raises her and raises her hoof and to kind of talk to the speaker. And long story short, uh, she just says that um, all this time you've been really talking about what we should have done for the shelter and things that would have been better to know before I even started. And she's just saying that. Uh, wouldn't it be much better if they could create a group to help out the newcomers? And everybody claps and enjoys the idea. Like, yay! And the speaker says, Miss Fluttershy, I think you're going to be a great addition to our group. Yay! Much awesomeness. Well, it, it's a definitely a bold step for Fluttershy. Yeah. This used to be a pony who was afraid to even talk to people. True that, true that. And this is a step up because... Uh, you mentioned before, Fluttershy is super shy and talking to people is scary. And just like interrupting, uh, not really interrupting, but just uh, talking to a speaker about her ideas, like that is so not like Fluttershy. Like Fluttershy has changed and evolved. And the best part is everybody agreeing with her. Yay! Much awesomeness. So huzzah. And back to Rarity at Coco's shop. Okay, I, I have to bring something up because I just remembered something. Um, when Fluttershy said that she'll meet up with Rarity at her shop, that's not true. She went to Coco's shop. Like, what? Well, I mean, maybe that's... Do you want to show them what they have to offer? Bye-bye. Well, I guess Rarity's borrowing Coco's shop? Or, wait. Spring... Yeah, Promel. See? Maybe she's helping Coco. Yeah, but no, here's the thing. <laughs> okay, this is a bit nitpicky, but I, I don't know. It's just me like, okay, meet you at a shop. Like, Rarity does have a shop in Manhattan. Okay, you know what? That's another theory for another day. So anyway, in the shop, we get to see uh, a lot of fashions here going on. And it's a success. Rarity's done a lot of amazing things. And yay, fashion show is success. Yay, yay. Yay. So, Yay. Uh, what else I guess? say? Like, yeah, Rarity got some ideas for new stuff, and uh, Coco here is just really impressed. Honestly, she looks a little freaked out when she sees the <laughs> uh, It's like when you stare into the abyss, the abyss dilates your pupils. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So, with that, uh, Rarity's creative block has been shattered. Fluttershy's uh, gotten past her. I won't say pass of fear. Like I, I don't really understand what Fluttershy has done, except for the seminar and doing awesome and great at it. So let's just say they all had a good time and comic ends. Yay! Yay! So with that, um, final thoughts, I guess. What do you think, Silva? Well, this is just fun. I mean, it's hard to summarize it because the events are very, the chain of events are very by the numbers. You have a problem, you have a rising tension with the conflict. It's not the end of Western world if uh, if fashion regresses to the 80s or goes cyclical. But you have the characters struggling with what they want to do. And so there's an investment in their future there. But it's never you never get the sense that they're in danger of giving up on what they enjoy doing. They're just frustrated. I like that in other stories, Rarity might somehow stem the return of 80s fashion she might try to assert control over the uh over the fashion world which would be more unrealistic in my eyes i know that sounds strange talking about fashion and ponies but imagine if uh, if a pony just suddenly defines fashion for all of equestria 
Here, Rarity is acknowledging this is happening. No matter what, it's happening. And she can't fight the tide. She finds a way to work with it. True, true. And she did mention before that fashion always... Uh, what was her word again? Like, she mentioned it before. Uh, what was it again? Give me a second. Oh, where's, where's that page? Okay, Um, now it's just derivative. So, derivative means cycling, right? Once again, to Google, I will read you the proper definition. Derivative, adjective, typically of an artist or a work of art. Imitative of the work of another person and usually disapproved for that uh, reason. Okay. So, something that is based on another source. So, it's just someone else did it and now you're just being a cop. Uh, but uh, with fashion, here's the thing. I, I remember way back when, um, this is according to my dad, where... Uh, bell bottom jeans were the rage and when i was in high school um okay by the way uh, i have to preface here something uh in malaysia we don't have uh, the we we have a uniform code where each student has to wear a uniform usually that would be a white collar shirt with uh, green long pants so th- there were some students who had bell bottom uh, khakis so yeah that, that was strange and that was what in 1997 90 sorry no that that would be around 1999 or something like that like near the 2000s so yeah that's strange well it all comes full circle and it all makes sense at the time usually because it's new and different it helps you stand out kind of yeah that's, that's true but at the same time too like fashion is always a cycle like we mentioned before like with the bell bottom jeans and so on and fashion is a strange beast to itself always now me i've got no eye for fashion i just you know am i covered against the elements am i am i proper okay we're moving yeah on. i i have to agree t-shirt and jeans for me or t-shirt and short long pants yeah that's that's me it's like, oh, no, you're not making a statement. My statement is, I'm going outside. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. My statement is, I'm going to dress as Goku. <laughs> Don't. Your shirt will get ripped off all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, yeah. Uh, um, is that all silver? Mm, just that it's fun to see all the references. But, again, you have to read the comic. We can't summarize it for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, the real appeal is in the visuals. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And like I mentioned before, Andy Price's work are always a work of art. <laughs> uh, the word that came out of my mouth didn't make sense. <laughs> Although I do appreciate the very first panel, the shot of the city. If you look in the upper right corner, it says silver on top of one of the buildings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're trying to say something. I I just like that he put a silver in there. I have no idea why, <laughs> but it's like surely there, surely there's an eighties reference in that. Uh, yeah, true. But like, let's look for the quill. Is there a quill around? <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not for me. But I do, I do like it all the same. True. Yay. Yeah, I, I know. But could you just imagine? Oh man, this happened to Linkara in. A little to pet shop, like oh my god, that was a really huge or uh, nice uh, shout out. <laughs> he was he was referenced in Little's pet yeah, shop? in the Little pet shop comic book. Oh nice, yeah, and that's like literally it's him with the whole uh, outfit he had way back when before he changed into the current one. Nice, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, you done, Silva? Yes. As for me, uh, this comic is awesome. I like the art. Like I always mentioned, Andy Price's artwork is just awesome like i cannot say much good about it like it is just awesome uh for the story it's slice of life like there's no huge threat like you mentioned before uh but but the thing is like one of the few things that i have trouble or i question is that it's fluttershy like fluttershy is one of the element bearers shouldn't people know her by now and know her talent and yeah, like for me, the way I look at it and I think of it is like Fluttershy Shine talks to animal. Like she has the upper hand in this. It's hard to say. I mean, 
I think you could walk up, walk down the street, and because you're not expecting to see a celebrity, you wouldn't recognize them right away. Probably, probably. And of course, when they say, and let's be honest, it's been a thing from the second season onward that they're well-renowned heroines, and yet ponies seem to give them the brush off every single time. Uh, even if you're important ponies, these ruffians, <laughs> es- <laughs> especially if you're a princess. <laughs> and you know this Twilight still gets the brush off like what <laughs> oh yeah uh, well yeah well pl- plus plus, this is Manhattan and according to New Yorkers you could be the president and they wouldn't give him a lick oh, except for Obama people like Obama yeah this was we talked about this when Obama was president I don't know how New Yorkers would react to our current <laughs> president Hey, you eat, you eat pizza with a with a fork and a knife. You ain't a real New Yorker. Oh, and like that happened to one of the mayors of New York. What he ate a pizza with a fork and yeah. a knife. Yeah, Trump did the oh, same. Oh my goodness! But no, okay, Trump is a okay. Trump is how do I put this? A lunatic. <laughs> That's one word to put it. But no, uh, I got no idea. He is from he okay, where is from New York? No, right? Theoretically, kind of. So yeah, oh, man. There's so much wrong with that. Like eating pizza with a food. Like he's eating like a tourist. Oh boy. So where was I again? Oh yeah. Uh, love comic. Uh, but one thing I do notice that you can take lessons from this one is Fluttershy. And mostly Fluttershy. And I think you can take some of Rarity where if you're gonna take, uh, if you're gonna do something, it's always best to learn from people who had experience. And in this scenario here, if you already done it, why not try and help people who are starting out? A good example is us YouTubers or something like that, or reviewers or whatever it is. Like, we could help new people get into the game. But it depends on finding your strength, too. I mean, I guess the big thing is that the group Fluttershy puts together can help you with the regulations and the basic setup but what they can't help you do is find your own style true that true that and there's where rarity comes in with i had experience in doing this so let me see what i can do now and she well uh, it's like what you mentioned before with the whole 10 year challenge meme where okay this is me drawing x art in 2000 10 years later this is me doing the same art but different I've seen those, and those are really impressive. Indeedy. But, yeah, anywho, um, those are my thoughts. Uh, this comic is pretty simple. So, anywho, uh, what are you going to do next week, Silva? Well, by the time folks are listening to this podcast, I believe that uh, Season 9 will have just started. Yep, I think if we do start to review it, we've been, like, probably four or f- six episodes apart. So, yeah. But- we're closing in, though, because next we can review The Sounds of Silence, which in my eyes is the bestest episode of season yeah, 8. Yeah, with one of the nicest songs. Woohoo! Ah, oh, so we're looking forward to that. Yeah, can't Yay! wait, can't wait. Oh, man. Oh, man. Like, I I have to ask now, um, what's your favorite song out of season 8, man? I, honestly, I think it would be uh, You Gotta Let It Rain. Gotta Let It Rain, really? Now, I'm just trying to double check because I am forgetting... Most of it, like season eight songs, like well, yeah, um, uh, friendship use not bad, but road to friendship is kind of nipping at the heels of sound of silence. Like road to friendship, that's a nice song. And then there's also the surf and turf. Yeah, find a home. <laughs> yeah, surf and turf. Yeah, uh, that, that was a good one too. But yeah, that that is gonna be another discussion for another day because we have another song called uh, "Just Can't Be a Dragon Here." <laughs> That is another episode that I... Oh, green teeth be angry now. Or Well, all good things in yes. time. Or angry. Yes, things. yes. Angry bird noises. Yeah. So, you know what? Um, We're on episode 64. No, um, issue 64, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, you know what? We'll discuss this probably later when we're not recording. But hey, um, we're near the end. So, anyhow, um, 
If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshowgmail.com. You can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS Show and my personal Twitter account at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill, on DeviantArt, also MLP Silver Quill. If you do a search on YouTube for After the Fact or Silver Quill, you will find my channel. And check out Equestria Daily every Wednesday for an editorial or comic review by myself. And on Fridays, I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight. Nice, nice. Those are awesome to read up. And yeah, much catching up to do. Yes. So anyway, uh, let's see. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Black. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Zissi of the Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya! Adiós. I got no funny comeback here. Spiders. <laughs>